Alexa, tell me a joke about music. Knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? It? Karma. Karma who? Karma, 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 Kamil Ian. You come and go. You come and go. Oh, oh, oh. one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Here we are with the August version already of Bargain Bag, my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures that I kind of sort of know what's in these bags because I assembled them myself from the one dollar shelf at Epic Seconds uh, back when they were having a four for a dollar special. I just loaded up because I was just not ready for Bargain Bag to end and here we are in the first of its, I believe, two final years of Bargain Bag. So yes, I've still got 16 more of these uh, in my closet waiting to be opened. Anyway, uh, yes, my, my favorite uh, uh, feature on this channel, basically since I started doing it, and that's all thanks to a guy named Sam Bennett, who was a YouTuber back then, isn't anymore, but he kind of inspired me to do this thing. He opened up a big bunch of a couple of big, huge uh, mystery CD grab bags. They had like 40 discs in them. He did them on live streams, and that just kind of got the bug in my ear. Hey, why not do a small bag every month? So here we go. Actually, it started out for a while as two bags, but now it's uh, one bag a month. So anyway, uh, let me stop rambling here. And uh, yes, before I actually open the new bag, I will go over in rough order from Castoffs to Keepers what was in last month's bargain bag. So let's go ahead and get the ball rolling with these CDs uh, in, I think I said in rough order from Castoffs to Keepers. Uh, yes, uh, far be it from me to re repeat myself. Anyway, here we go. Starting off with Daniel O'Donnell. Uh, yes, uh, as you might have, as you might recall, in the last bargain bag, there was a Daniel O'Donnell CD, and I think that one and this one were, I believe, the only two that uh, will have been in any, any of my bags. So this, I think, is the last you'll see of Daniel O'Donnell. And I'm not disappointed by that fact, honestly. Um, he's got a big, huge following in the UK. I think he's Irish. Well, the name, duh, he's Irish. Uh, but yeah, and he, I'm sure he's got a huge following. He's got a good enough voice. It's just between this album and the last one, uh, this one is um, 20 more Blue Jeans classics. This is classic songs, pop songs from the 50s and 60s. Um, I just don't hear a lot of personality in his voice. You know, he sounds... I hate to say this, I don't like to trash singers, so I hope this doesn't sound like I'm trashing him, but he seems to have just about all the personality of a lounge singer. Uh, so maybe these were just the wrong CDs to introduce me to Daniel O'Donnell with. I could be wrong. He could have a fantastic voice on some of his other albums, but yeah, I'm just... Uh, these just sound like... A very run-of-the-mill, paint-by-numbers covers of classic songs. So, sorry to say, uh, this taste, at least, of Daniel O'Donnell, this CD and the last one, just did not do it for me, unfortunately. Uh, the next one up that I am also uh, getting rid of only because I have another uh, best of by this group is The Platters. Uh, a great bunch of songs here. There, I, uh, I was tempted to keep this one because there are a couple songs on this one that are not on the one that I uh, currently have in my collection, and of course I cannot, I can't tell you off the top of my head with my questionable memory uh, which songs are unique to this one that are not on the other one. Uh, I think I'm Sorry is one of them, and that was a pretty good song, uh, but yeah. So uh, apparently the temp temptation has gone down a little bit now that I can't remember which songs I kind of would have liked to have kept the CD and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, great group, classic doo-wop group from the 50s. You've got to hear them if you haven't yet. The platters are outstanding. Um, the next non-keeper is John Wesley Harding. Uh, this guy, he's I've heard of him for a long time. He And I can't remember if he named himself after the Bob Dylan album or if... Uh, because, but that is not his real name. He, John Wesley Harding is not his real name. So I assume he named himself after the uh, Bob Dylan song or album. Um, 
folk rock, basically. Uh, and this one coming from 1991, I think. It's got a little bit of the... Uh, well, I guess this would be slightly pre-grunge, not post-grunge. But just got a little bit of that um, sound to it. Just not a lot of stuff. I mean, well, there's uh, 15 songs on here, so it's a pretty loaded up album. It's just nothing on it really tickled my fancy. So I might try out a different John Wesley Harding album in the future. Uh, next up we have Julio Iglesias with his Tango album. Obviously, judging by the name of the album, this is a collection of Tango numbers. Uh, he's fantastic voice. I mean, he's got one of the best... Uh, opera caliber voices ever uh just i just was not captivated by well there are a couple of songs on here that had kind of pretty cool uh um melodies and rhythms and instrumentation in it i might give this one a another listen maybe but i've gotten a little bit uh pretty selective lately about the music that i keep in my collection so this one will probably end up going bye bye then we have an ep by the afghan wigs uh, another group that i have definitely had, had heard of for years and years, just never given them a try. Uh, not bad. Uh, these guys kind of remind me of uh, the Connells, a favorite uh, rock group of mine. Uh, they got a little bit of that, uh, a little bit of that jangle rock sort of thing going on, uh, reminiscent of uh, REM, uh, and and a little bit of U2 in there also, just a little bit. Um, but yeah, not bad. Um, I won't keep this one. I might give a full album of theirs a try at some point. And then the third from last, which is, yeah, this one is probably not going to be a keeper either. Uh, not bad. And it's not going to be a keeper mainly because it's uh, primarily rap. It's got a little bit of R&B, but it's mostly rap. Uh, Kid Sister is the artist's name. This is her album, Ultraviolet. It's okay stuff. You know, I um, hip-hop is one of those genres that, uh, well, I don't have much of in my collection in the first place. But, of course, it's got to be something really uh, ear-catching for me to want to keep it. And, uh, yeah, a couple of good tunes in here. Uh, this has uh, guest appearances by Estelle, Kanye West, CeeLo, and DJ Gantman. I've never heard of him. Uh, or maybe he's Jewish. Maybe he's Gantman. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> bad joke. Sorry. Uh, but, yeah, just not much going on there. But the two keepers are major keepers for me. Now, uh, if you have a recollection of what was in the last bag, you know right off the bat what's going to be my number one keeper, but my number two keeper is not far behind. It is Boom Crash Opera with their album These Are Crazy Times. These guys are great. Um, they've got that kind of, uh, well, those of you who are not from the era or, or don't remember the era firsthand uh, probably don't know what I'm talking about, but that early 90s uh, pop rock sort of stuff. These guys, back in the day, these guys probably would have cringed at being thought of as having some pop in their sound. But, you know, in the pre-grunge days, that kind of, or at least since grunge, all the music from before then kind of, by default, by comparison to grunge, sounds like it has pop in it, just because grunge was so grungy. <laughs> so so guitar-heavy and rocky and, and grimy guitar sounding, you know. Uh, you, you know what I'm trying to say. But yes, these guys, um, when I first got into music with lyrics uh, back in the early 90s, uh, there was some, I did a lot of uh, blind or deaf buying, you know, buying stuff that I, I'd never heard of them before, just taking a chance on them, just buying them, just because I was, I had my feelers out there and I really wanted to listen to whatever was out there. And uh, these guys remind me of a lot of that stuff, uh, just stuff that I picked up and listened to and by chance happened to love and have kept in my collection ever since. And these guys, if I had listened to this CD back in the day, back then, I, it probably would have been one that I would have kept in my collection ever since. And that's just that's just how these guys sound strikes me. It's just fantastic. I loved a lot of these songs from the moment I heard them. Uh, they're an Australian band, and so they've got a little bit of that... I don't know if it's just because... I know in my head that they're an Australian band, but for some reason, they remind me a little bit of Midnight Oil uh, and Midnight Midnight Oil's early albums. But again, that could just be the fact that that I know that they're Australian might just be planting that in my head. 
But um, yeah, just a little bit of that and a tiny little bit of ethnic sound, which I think Australian bands more often than not tend to put a little bit of, you know, ethnic Australian indigenous sounds, just little traces of them in their songs. Uh, that's Midnight Oil was famous for that. And uh, so these guys too have that a little bit in their sound and just some of that fun, slightly, slightly quirky, slightly oddball um, sensibility in their music. But yeah, I love this stuff. Uh, give this album a try, particularly. Uh, These Are Crazy Times by Boom Crash Opera. Uh, it's fantastic stuff. Uh, Onion Skin is the opening track. That's great. And uh, uh, Piece of the Pie and Get Out of the House are two really, really good songs. Uh, I, I really like Dancing in the Storm. That was a great one. Uh, but yeah, and this was produced by Jimmy Iovine. So a big name behind uh, behind the boards, as they say. Uh, so yeah, I, I highly recommend checking this out, especially if you kind of like or or have wanted to explore that early '90s uh, stuff. Yeah, this was this was 1990. So yeah, a highly recommended album, definitely in my keepers. This could be in my top ten, maybe even my top five when I do my favorite bargain bag finds uh, of the year list at the end of the year. You'll probably be be hearing that one, but one that you will definitely be hearing in that list. Very, very close to, if not at the top, is, of course, Whitney Houston. Um, I'm your baby tonight. Fantastic. I, do I even need to say, to, to just to give my reasons why this is such a good album? I mean, the title track is one of Whitney Houston's all-time bangers, period, the end, goodbye. Um, no, not goodbye. Don't turn off the video yet. It's not over. But, uh, yeah, My Name Is Not Susan. That's another great upbeat song. All the Men That I Need is one of her best ballads ever, and one that I completely forgot about until I listened to this album. That that happens sometimes, just some of those great songs that once you finally hear them again, you realize, oh yeah, those were on the radio all the time back then, but just for some reason they just completely exited your mind, your memory, until you hear the album decades later. Uh, but yes, um, and Stevie Wonder... Come, uh, is, appears on this album in a duet with her. We Didn't Know is the name of that song. So just every bit as good uh, as her first two albums, her self-titled and Whitney. This is just right up there. One of the greatest pop R&B albums of the 90s, if not of all time. I'm done. No, no I'm not yet. I have to open the new bag, but uh, you know what I mean. Yeah. Number one, the Winner Winner Chicken Dinner by a, a long shot. Well, not as much of a long shot. I mean, these two, these, these are kind of neck and neck uh, with uh, my favorite discs from this month's Bargain Bag uh, Breakdown. So, yeah. And honestly, just only two out of eight keepers, but those two were super duper keepers. Anyway, let's move on to the new bag. As I've mentioned before, uh, Bargain Bag, I love doing Bargain Bag. It's kind of like Christmas 12 times a year. And who would not want Christmas 12 times a year? Especially since you don't have to mess with putting up the tree and the decorations for 11 of those times. It's just, it's just a win-win, right? Anyway, let's take a little off the top. Actually, let's take a lot off the top. And let's see what is in... I'm right-handed when it comes to this. Let's see what is in here. What do we have? We have Paul Brown and Friends with their album White Sand. Actually, actually, let's do this one. Um, this is, I believe, a jazz album. Oh, yes, from Peak Records. Peak is a jazz label owned by Concord, or at least at the time was owned by Concord Records. We have Jesse J, Al Jarreau, Boney James, a fantastic saxophone player, uh, Bobby Caldwell, David Benoit, a great pianist, um, Huge Groove, and Rick Braun, a great uh, trumpet player, guest star on this album. So I'm going to have a lot of fun listening to some. Uh, those artists that I just mentioned, a few of those were some of my sister's favorite jazz artists. So she would have loved this album, I think. So yeah, this one's going to be fun to listen to. And then we have... Oh yeah, um, David Foster and Friends. Yes, David Foster, a top-rate um, songwriter and producer. This is a um, compilation album with uh, with a bunch of guest artists uh, performing his songs. 
So this is definitely going to be great. And it's got, it's a CD and a DVD. So there you go. We have Kenny G, Michael Bublé, Blake Shelton, Josh Groban, Brian McKnight, Celine Dion, Catherine McPhee, for you American Idol uh, fans, uh, Peter Cetera. So yeah, so many people uh, on this album. This one's going to be another great one to listen to. I'm just two discs in, and this is already a pretty darn good bargain bag. What do we have here? Hmm. Con Can, or Con Can, I don't know how you pronounce it. Syntonic, I have absolutely no idea. This is from 1990. This could be interesting. Yes, some of these CDs I don't even re remember picking, plucking off the shelves. I picked, I grabbed so many of them. So, uh, just any of them that looked even remotely Basically, any CD that didn't automatically look like something I would not like at all, I just grabbed so I could throw into these bags. So, and there could be some very interesting treasures that I find in some of these. Oh, Diana Ross, yay, with her album Blue. And this is from 2006, so a fairly recent album. So, yes, I unfortunately, sad to say, very sad to say, did not care for her album, what was it, last year? Uh, she put out a new album last year. I just did not, could not get into it. Uh, they did a little too much uh, pitch correction on her vocals. And uh, that was so funny. I loved it the first time. The second time, it just kind of fell right off the cliff for me. I had never had a CD um, go cold on me so fast. And I hate that because I love Diana Ross's classic stuff. So, well, you can't control whether you like something or you don't. That's just a fact of life, isn't it? Next up we have Brian Hughes with his album Straight to You. Um, oh, Higher Octave. So this is uh, either jazz or new age. Oh, yes. Guitarist extraordinaire Brian Hughes evokes the classic snappy finger stylings of the legendary Wes Montgomery as he weaves a seductive synthesis of Latin, Brazilian, Middle Eastern, and funky blues rhythms into an exciting jazz context. This could be interesting to listen to. I like listening to, um, when I'm in the mood for him, uh, world music and uh, um, ethnic rhythms. So, And I've got three left. We have, oh, Jill Scott. Uh, who is Jill Scott? Words, Words and Sounds, Volume 1. And this one, I think I might have had this one a long, long time ago, but uh, at the time, my music taste was uh, not quite as evolved back then. Uh, I got rid of it, so I didn't care for it at the time, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, yeah. And she was actually on, and I think one of the th reasons why I picked up, it might have been a different album of Jill Scott's, but uh, picked up one of hers back in the day. She actually starred on an, I believe it was an HBO original series, called, and I'm going to butcher the name, but uh, The Number One Ladies Detective Agency. It took place in Botswana, the, the African country of Botswana, and it was a great detective story. It had a quirky sense of humor, and it was it was kind of fun. You learned a little bit of about the culture in Botswana. And so if you can find it, it I don't know if, it, if HBO Max or whatever has it on streaming, or if you... You know, if you're left to nothing but trying to find a DVD set, uh, it's worth looking at, especially if you like mysteries. It's a fun. It was a fun little show. It only ran for one season, but it was a fun show, and she was fantastic in it. So, okay. And next up, we have oh, Josh Grayson. Speaking of American Idol, mentioned American Idol a minute ago. Uh, yeah, I I did not watch the show, but I've seen the the highlight reel of the season that Josh Grayson was in. I was about to say Gr Josh Groban. Different Josh. But, uh, yeah, we'll be interested to listen to his stuff. So, yeah. And the final CD we have is... Uh, oh, Maxwell, with his album Now. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about Maxwell, so it'll be interesting to listen to this. So... There you have it. The newest batch of Bargain Bag CDs, which... Uh, about which you will hear my thoughts in about a month from now. So, there we go. Boys and girls, be careful with scissors.
like I wasn't just a second ago. I dropped them. And anyway, so that is it. Iced tea, refreshing. Anyway, that is it for Bargain Mag for the month of August 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and browse my past videos and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be music snob.